Quentin looked at his young wife and couldn't be happier. And why wouldn't he be happy? She was 10 years younger than him, and he saw it as a real gift of fate. To say that Gloria was beautiful would be a huge understatement. A slender body, long wavy locks cascading down her shoulders. And of course, those huge blue eyes, one could get lost. Visits to the tanning salon and beauty salons, all of it just emphasized Gloria's innate beauty. Envious people often said that it wasn't hard to take care of one's appearance when they were married to a wealthy man like Quinton. But Gloria would just coyly smile in response and speak of the genuine feelings she had for her husband. Before meeting her, Quinton was a widower who lost his wife in a car accident. It happened four years ago. Back then, the businessman thought that he would never be able to love anyone else. But time passed, and living as a lonely widower was incredibly hard for Quinton. The situation was further complicated by the fact that the businessman had to raise his five-year-old daughter, Jessica, on his own. Back then, most of the people in Quentin's life doubted that he would be able to find the strength to start over. But they were all wrong. To avoid falling into depression, Quentin focused on developing his business, in which he subsequently excelled. That was about the time Gloria came into his life. His business partner, David, repeatedly told Quentin, if I were you, I wouldn't rush into marriage. Yes, she's beautiful as a goddess, but can she be a good wife and mother? And how will Jessica react to all this? The businessman bit his lip. What does Jessica have to do with this? I can't let a five-year-old dictate my life. David shook his head. He was seven years older than his partner and thus understood life much better than Quentin did. But despite David's best efforts, Quentin proposed to Gloria. Perhaps it was a mistake, but the businessman didn't think so. He was confident that he had found the love of his life. They had a grand wedding at the city's finest restaurant. Tables were overflowing with various dishes. There was live music, and the room was filled with celebrities from the world of show business. For Gloria, it felt like her life had turned into a fairy tale. The guests enjoyed themselves, continuously toasting to the newlyweds, while Quentin and Gloria posed for photographers, collecting materials for famous fashion magazines. Only one person felt uncomfortable in the atmosphere of universal happiness and ostentatious luxury. And that person was five-year-old Jessica, the groom's daughter. Being the groom's daughter, she suddenly found herself on the sidelines. Her dad wasn't by her side, and other people walked by indifferently unwilling to tear their enthusiastic gazes away from the stage. At that moment, Jessica longed for parental affection and care more than ever. But Quentin had no time for her right now, as he was busy building his personal life. Having left Jessica in the care of a nanny, the businessman was enjoying the spotlight and couldn't be happier about the second chance life had given him. To be honest, Gloria didn't make a good impression on Jessica from the very beginning. Jessica herself couldn't explain why she felt such a strong aversion to her stepmother. Perhaps it was Gloria's excessive affection and fiend care. It's long been known that kiddos have sensitive souls and immediately sense falsehood, and therefore withdrawn to themselves, stubbornly refusing to engage. And so it happened with Jessica. She saw something in Gloria that made her uneasy and cautious about this woman, who she felt was cold as ice. Of course, Gloria understood what was going on and would have gladly let the girl know what she thought of her, thus putting her in her place. However, the young woman was smart and cunning, so she decided not to rush things and wait for her moment. Quentin, in turn, had no idea that his daughter disliked her stepmother and didn't want to be left alone with her. In fact, it suited Gloria just fine. She never loved children, whether they were her own or someone else's. She believed that only people who had already given up on their personal life and plunged headfirst into family life could want to have children. Gloria wasn't rushing to become a housewife, so when Quentin raised the topic of children, her reaction was very sharp. Why would I want any of that, darling? I'm not ready to exchange my comfortable life for diapers and sleepless nights. Quentin usually respected her point of view, but sometimes he would be overcome by sadness realizing there was, after all, a 10-year age gap between them. Jessica felt this too, but chose to keep it to herself so as to avoid incurring the anger of her stepmother. One day, taking advantage of the fact that there was no one in the house except for her and her stepdaughter, Gloria decided to put Jessica in her place. 
She started by scolding Jessica for having toys scattered around her room. Then she made the girl call her mom, and when Jessica ran out of her room in tears, she laughed at her. However, Gloria had no idea of the unpleasant consequences this would lead to. Nannies usually didn't allow Jessica to go outside without them. But since Gloria was in charge of everything that day, no one could stop the girl. She ran out onto the porch and headed towards the nearest bushes, where she hoped to hide out, just like in the shack that she read about in the Tom Sawyer book. Unfortunately, rushing to get away from her evil stepmother, the little girl stumbled and fell down the steps. That was very painful. Jessica even cut her face, especially her right eyebrow where a deep bleeding wound appeared. When she saw her stepdaughter, Gloria raised her hands in frustration. See what you've done? You can't be left alone for a minute. Jessica whimpered softly and Gloria realized that it wasn't the right time to scold the girl as she might start crying out loud and Quentin was just about to return home from work. Let me help you, dear. Come here. Don't be afraid, she said in a soothing voice. Jessica slowly backed away, but she couldn't get away because Gloria immediately grabbed her hand and forcefully led her back into the house. There, she treated the girl's face with antiseptic, fully aware that there would still be a scar on Jessica's face. That evening, Gloria and Quentin had their first major fight. When he saw his daughter's tear-stained face with the bandage near her eyebrow, the businessman got furious. How could you let it happen? Couldn't you find the time to take care of our daughter? Gloria pursed her lips and then looked at Jessica with disdain. The poor girl got very quiet. At that moment, Gloria realized that she would never be able to love this rebellious girl. A month passed, despite the fact that the wounds on Jessica's face had completely healed, the scar right above her eyebrow still remained. It resembled a small lightning bolt, faintly reminiscent of the mark on the forehead of the wizard from the series of books about the school of witchcraft and wizardry. The conflict between Quentin and Gloria gradually faded away, and peace and comfort returned to their relationship. It was then that the businessman's wife suggested going on vacation to Florida. At first, Quentin wanted to object, citing his busy work schedule. But after weighing all the pros and cons, he agreed to a trip to the Atlantic coast. Gloria was literally on cloud nine, looking forward to a great vacation. But there was one thing that marred her happiness. Jessica was going to come with them to Miami, as she had never been to the ocean before. Since Quentin was fully immersed in his work, Gloria took charge of organizing the trip. It was then that a cunning plan formed in the head of the selfish beauty. First, she bought plane tickets in such a way that she and Jessica would leave first, and Quentin would join them only two days later. The businessman was fine with that. But if Quentin had only known what his wife had planned, he would have never agreed to her proposal. Gloria and her little stepdaughter headed to the ocean coast. When Jessica saw the beach warmed by the gentle sun, her excitement knew no bounds. At that moment, everything that had been bothering her before faded into the background. Jessica basked in the sun, frolicking in the warm, shallow waves, and built sandcastles. But at that very moment, Gloria was having a rather strange conversation several yards away from the shoreline. Gloria was talking to a very unpleasant man with a shifty look and fidgety hand movements. The topic of their conversation was unpleasant for both of them, as evidenced by the man's doubtful expression. Don't worry, I'll tell her that you're her father's driver. You'll take her as far away as possible and then leave her with your relatives, okay? Don't worry about the money. I'll send you a generous amount every month, so think about it. Gloria aggressively pushed forward. The stranger hesitated for a moment and then agreed to Gloria's terms. The amount Gloria offered was very tempting, so he couldn't pass up such an opportunity. After clarifying a few details, the conspirators shook hands and then went their separate ways. The next morning, Jessica disappeared. Unfortunately, this event coincided with Quentin's arrival, whom Gloria went to pick up at the airport. But when the couple returned to the hotel room, the girl was already gone. The maid had lowered her eyes and said that the girl had gone to the beach to build sandcastles. At that moment, Quentin's face changed and he rushed out. However, no matter how long he walked along the shore and called out for his daughter, he couldn't find Jessica. Of course, Quentin couldn't blame Gloria for negligence. 
After all, she was at the airport at the time, picking up her husband. She couldn't have known that the girl would disobey her. Sitting on the beach, Quentin wept loudly and cursed the ocean coast that had taken his daughter away. Lifeguards and search party members all agreed that if the girl had drowned, her body would have been washed up on the shore by the tide. Quentin enlisted everyone he could in the search for his daughter. Police officers, private detectives, and sympathy volunteers who refused to take money for their efforts. But it was all in vain. While Jessica was being searched for in the Miami Beach area, she was actually being taken in a completely different direction. Meanwhile, Gloria only rubbed her hands with satisfaction. Now that she had gotten rid of her main rival, all of Quentin's attention would be directed at her. It took Quentin a long time to come to terms with the loss of his daughter. Without ceasing to revel in her good fortune, Gloria lived it up as a true businesswoman. Twenty years passed. During this time, many things changed in the lives of Quentin and his wife. First and foremost, they got divorced. The divorce was Gloria's fault. She went too far and pushed Quentin towards the painful separation. The main cause for their breakup was the absence of children, which the sultry beauty couldn't stand. Quentin had longed for an heir for a while, and after Jessica's disappearance, he kept talking about it almost every day. Gloria tried to convince her husband that she was right, but then gave up and agreed to the divorce with substantial alimony payments. Since then, Quentin had finally realized that he wanted to remain single. He focused on his work and traveled around the country, financing orphanages and volunteer centers that helped the homeless. One day, Quentin was on a business trip to one of the small towns in Nevada and stopped for lunch at a roadside cafe. As he crossed the threshold of the establishment, he took a sniff and smiled contently. The place smelled of homemade baked goods, cinnamon, and freshly squeezed orange juice. Having spotted an empty table, Quentin headed towards it. At that moment, he accidentally bumped into a waitress coming to take his order. Oops, sorry, I'm, I'm so clumsy, the woman stammered. Quentin immediately started apologizing profusely, but when he looked at the young woman's face, he almost lost his ability to speak. The waitress had a very noticeable scar above her right eyebrow, a scar Quentin had seen before. Startled, Quentin whispered, Jessica, sweetheart, is that really you? At that very moment, the poor waitress dropped the tray, covered her eyes with her hands, and quietly burst into tears. Many years ago, when Jessica was kidnapped on Gloria's orders, she had to live with a foster family who gave her a new last name. Being in a state of shock from everything that happened to her, she had partially lost her memory, which was why she couldn't recall her real name. For over 20 years, Jessica lived in another family, completely unaware that she had a biological father who was a businessman. And only now, when by the will of fate, the two of them came face to face at the cafe, Jessica remembered everything. She hugged her father and continued to sob quietly. Quentin smiled and silently thanked the heavens for their help. If it weren't for divine intervention, they might have never crossed paths on the vast territory of the United States.